Uh, I honor the Lordship of Jesus. I want to take this opportunity to also thank the leadership and more especially Pastor Mama Mary Kimabi for allowing me to minister this morning. My name is Colin Odiambo and um, I would like to share this morning concerning the theme of restoration, the topic of restoration. So our topic this morning is restore, 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 O oh Lord. I um, hope media will help me beam the scriptures. Um, okay. So we are going to turn uh, our Bibles to our lead scripture, which is in Isaiah chapter number 42, verse 22. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. The word of the Lord says, But this is a people that are robbed and plundered, all of them have been trapped in holes. They are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey and no one delivers. For plunder because no one says restore. So a picture is painted here of a people who have been robbed, a people who have been plundered, a people who have been trapped in holes, people who have been locked in prison houses. And the Bible says that they are literally prey, and no one is delivering them in their state of plunder and robbery and being hidden in prison houses. Nobody is delivering them because there was nobody to cry restore. And I want to state one more time, we thank the Lord this morning because we are in this house where his honor dwells to cry restore, 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 oh Lord. Now, there cannot be a period of endless suffering. It is not so. Now, let's turn to First Peter chapter, uh, First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. The word of the Lord says, But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Say amen. amen. It says that, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered for a while, perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. This morning the Lord is saying that that grace to perfect you, that grace to establish you, that grace to strengthen you and settle you after a season of suffering, that grace has been availed. It is a season of divine settlement. It is a season where where God is going to wipe the tears of his people. There cannot be a season of endless suffering. Even Jesus, through his wilderness experience, after the, 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 after the season was over, he was ushered into another season again. So the whole life of Jesus was not just a wilderness. The children of Israel, after, you know, 
a wandering uh, in the wilderness, eventually God brought them into the promised land. And we are seeing this is the season for God to take us to our promised land. This is a season where God is taking us back to the Garden of Eden. Back to the Garden of Eden. Now, I want us to take another reading. Uh, before we take the reading, I want to redefine the word restoration. This is the word that caught my attention. Um, I'll just give you one definition of restoration. Now, restoration is the return of a monarch to the throne. Restoration is the return of a monarch to the throne. A monarch, M-O-N-A-R-C-H, to the throne. Or return of a regime to power. It is the return of a regime to power. So, uh, I want to paint a picture of a fall and paint again a picture of a restoration. So let's read Isaiah 47, verse 1 and verse 5. We are breaking down the word restoration. We have said restoration is the return of a monarch to power. And we understand from Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 that God has made us kings and priests. So when we are saying the return of a monarch to power, we are talking about you and I who are kings and who are priests. And there is a state of being fallen from the place where we are supposed to be. And God is promising us in this season that we, his monarchs, who were dethroned, who were removed from our privileged positions, our positions of favor that we, we used to enjoy, and we have been brought down to ground zero. God is saying that his grace is sufficient to take you back to your throne of favor. God is saying this morning his grace is sufficient to, to lift you from that pit of hopelessness and despondency. God is able to lift you from the pit back to your palace in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 47 verse 1 and verse 5. He talks about a demonic principality, but now what I want to paint is the picture of a state of being fallen. It says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne. Can you say Ishindwe? You will not sit on the ground without a throne. You are a reigning king. You are reigning now and your reign will continue in the millennial rule of Christ. He has redeemed us from our tribes and our tongues. And he has made us kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. It is the season of our reign. And we are standing in the house of God this morning. And we are saying, whatever dethroned us from our throne, that that era is being corrected in this season of the Lord's visitation. We are saying it is the season of era correction. 
we are saying it is in this season that princes are getting back to the horsebacks. We are saying we have had enough of slaves being on horsebacks and princes walking on foot. We are saying God has made divine provision for our elevation, for our lifting. He is the glory and the lifter of your head and my head. Our heads are no longer going to be buried in the sand with shame, with dishonor, with rejection, with reproach. There is an anointing for a lifting today. In the mighty name of Jesus, there must be a divine alignment of our lives to the divine agenda of restoration. We refuse to settle for less. Shaka da 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 da. You must return to your throne. That business that was taken from you, you must return to your throne. Those who are terminated in employment, we decree in the name of Jesus, new jobs, new jobs, new jobs. Let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It says, come and sit on the dust of virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne. Then verse 5 says, sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of Chaldeans. That describes the state of fall that many of our families, many of our dreams are. Some of our dreams have literally been buried in satanic graveyards, in our villages, in demonic altars. We are seeing in the name of Jesus all those dreams that have been buried by witchcraft, by generational curses. They are going to be unburied in this season. I prophesy in the name of Elohim that godly dream that you had that has been buried all these years. I prophesy like Joseph, you will dream again. You will dream again. Your star will rise again. In the name of Jesus. Demonic fetters must break. Demonic chains must break. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Verse 24 and 25. The word of the Lord says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the captives of the righteous be delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. And I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. And they shall be drunk with their own blood, as with sweet wine. That all flesh may know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, and the Mighty One of Jacob. One of the things that God was telling me is that... The word of God says even the lawful captive, even the legal captive will be set free because this is a season of mercy. You see, 
when you, when you have done wrong and you are due for judgment and penalty and then you are saved from the judgment and the penalty and the consequences of your indiscretions and all your sins and iniquities then you have received mercy I prophesy in the name of Jesus a river of mercy a river of mercy is released uh, from this altar today it takes hold of our bloodlines it takes hold of our families it takes hold of this our very lives we are going to enjoy mercy some of us have made financial mistakes. Some of us have made marital mistakes. Some of us have made career mistakes. But God is saying, even the legal captives, yeah. the lawful captives yeah. will be set free yeah. on the account of the mercy of God. It is a season of restoration. The Lord is going to release us yes. from the punishment and the judgment of our of our personal sins because he is a god of mercy now i want to say this um I want to say this, that in this season of restoration, one of the things that will happen is that there will be restoration of the prophetic voice of the church in the seven mountains of influence. I want to say that again. There will be restoration of the prophetic voice of the church in the seven mountains of influence there will be a restoration of the prophetic voice of the church in the seven mountains of influence now let me quickly give you the seven mountains of influence then we read two scriptures now when we are talking about the seven mountains of influence we are saying that these are seven culture shaping areas of influence over each society these are seven culture shaping areas of influence culture shaping areas of influence of each society now, number one, number one is the mountain of media and communication. That is one place in this season, the mountain of media and communication. Have you noticed because of the season we have been, even the people who used to preach that Facebook is demonic are preaching on Facebook because social media in itself is not an evil. You see, it is like money. Money in the hand of the righteous will expand the kingdom. Money in the hand of a drug baron or a prostitute will serve the agenda of the enemy. So even Facebook in the hand of believers is a tool for expansion and influence of the society. And one of the things the enemy has done to the church is to cause us to get out of this mountain of influence so that we have not been keen on spreading our tentacles on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and all these social media platforms. But in this season of restoration, I prophesy in the name of Jesus, I see Crisco radio station. I see Crisco radio station, Crisco television station. We are not going to be excluded from this mountain of influence. Restoration of the prophetic voice of the church in the mountain of media and communication. And I want to encourage the brethren that God has raised in this season. Those of you whom God has raised and given financial muscles. You have already built enough houses. It is time for you to gather together.
together with like-minded brethren, gather money and begin to set up radio stations, TV stations for the body of Christ, for the sake of the influence of Christ. What shall we gain after buying all those ten houses for yourself? Can't you reason? We need to make our crown. We will not be on this earth forever. Jesus, uh, Paul told the Colossian, the Thessalonian church, that you are my crown. When, when we set up media platforms, like right now, you have noticed in this season, when you watch Crisco Facebook page, Crisco Church on the Egg, there are even people in Germany watching us, yet we are physically located in Kisumu. That is called influence. It is called influence. Praise King Jesus. Praise King Jesus. So don't just be digging your boreholes and doing things that are related to your own interests. How about your crown? Do you know you, you may be a frontliner in this life, but in heaven you will be a backbencher because you did not use the muscle and the resources that God placed at your disposal to, to, to propagate the influence of the kingdom. I charge you in the name of Jesus to remember the Lord that raised you from the dust and gave you that platform of influence in the name of Jesus. Another mountain of influence is the mountain of governance, leadership, and politics. The mountain of governance, leadership, and politics. Now, the word of the Lord says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, in the past, we were told, let politics be for the what? For the politicians. So many believers who are called by God excluded that platform of influence and left to the wicked men and women. And you have seen, they have supervised the plunder of our nation. They have disenfranchised a whole generation of people. Kenya that was known a nation of optimism and hope is, is now like a nation with a mass of people who have been watered down and rained on like chicken. And I want to tell you, much as there is a lot of intricacy and evil in platforms like politics, we cannot discount the fact that God has called some brethren to influence the platform of politics, of leadership, and governance. And this thing, there is a word here, a dichotomy between the secular and the spiritual. To, to dichotomize, to divide that politics is secular to pray in church is spiritual. I want to tell you politics is not secular. And if I understand the meaning of the word secular, secular comes from a Latin word seclorun, meaning a place where God is not. So you want to tell me God is not in politics. If you say politics is secular, what you are saying is that politics is a place where God is not. And as a matter of fact, the Lord is our king. The Lord is our lawgiver. And God wants his influence in the mountain of politics. So politics is not secular. King David said, where can I hide from your presence? The influence of the king of glory is on the whole globe. In politics, in governance, in leadership. So leadership is not, uh, politics is not secular. And I pray that the brethren that God has called to influence in this mountain of politics, will rise to the occasion in the name of Jesus. The, uh, three, mountain of economy. The mountain of economy. That is another platform of influence. Another one, mountain of religion. Uh, I'm running quickly. Another one, mountain of family. Mountain of religion. Mountain of family, mountain of economy. 
uh, the sixth one is the mountain of education, science, and technology. The mountain of education, science, and technology. And since God has brought me into this mountain as a scientist and an, as an educator, I know this is one of the platforms of influence. And I want to pray that God will help us to raise model schools that have a godly curriculum that will program the minds of our young ones to the fear of God and godliness. Praise King Jesus. The last one is the mountain of arts, celebration, sports, and entertainment. The mountain of arts, celebration, sports, and entertainment. Now, let me quote this scripture. Mark, mountain of arts, celebration, sports, and entertainment. There are even churches like in Ukraine that have literally set up the church structure with the department. So they have a media and communication department and they bring the brethren who are called in that platform and they bring them and they, you know, they download from the spirit of God how to influence that mountain. Those who are called to the mountain of economy. They also converse together and see how they can front the kingdom agenda, yeah, and so forth. Now, I quote Mark 16 verse 15. The first part says, Mark 16 verse 15. It says, Go ye into the whole world. We have been commanded to go into the world of entertainment. We have been commanded to go and influence the world of media. We have been commanded to go and influence the world of education, science, and technology. Praise King Jesus. Praise King Jesus. And in Isaiah chapter 2, I would like us to read Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. It says, Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations will flow into it. Verse 3. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and he sh we shall walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The mountain of influence, the influence of the church will, will, will eclipse the influence of the Antichrist in these spheres of influence. In the season of restoration, the voice of the church that has been silenced is going to spring forth. The voice of the church, the voice of the church will be restored. Now, as I come to the tail end of my sharing, I want to say that the Lord in this season of restoration will restore unto us destiny helpers. The Lord will restore unto us destiny helpers. And I will quickly talk about destiny, some two groups of destiny helpers. Now, destiny helpers are agents that are equipped, empowered, assigned, and ordained by God to help you fulfill destiny. They are agents equipped empowered, assigned, and ordained by God to help you fulfill destiny. Now, I want to talk about one group that we call destiny helpers. We call them angels. Can you say angels? Let's read 
Hebrews 1.14 uh, Hebrews 1.14 It says that angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to you and me who are the heirs of salvation. So angels are ministering spirits. They are our destiny helpers. When Jesus was tired, the Bible says the angels came and strengthened him. Now, let's read Psalms 34 verse 7. Psalms 34 verse 7. So angels are our destiny helpers. Psalms 34 verse 7. It says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and he delivers them. I decree and declare an encampment of angels round your embassy, round your business, round your interests in the name of Jesus. So long as you fear God, there is an encampment of angels. Tell your neighbor, God's angels are part of my security detail. Tell them one more time, God's angels are part of my security detail. There is an encampment of angels around Crisco Central Church, around the Samaritan Inn, around our sons and our daughters, around our leadership. Now, this is the one that hit me hard on destiny helpers called angels. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Actually, this is my last reading. Acts chapter 12. Um, we are going to read selectively. Um, Actually, the whole reading is from verse 5 to 15. Now, look at this. 5 says, And Peter was kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. When Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping and bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Verse 7. Now behold an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up. Arise quickly and his chains fell off his hands. Tell your neighbor deliverance by an angel. Are you seeing chains are breaking off? Do you know some of the chains that are holding your hands will just break because you have mobilized enough prayer and now angelic visitations are your portions and now there will be just chains that will be breaking. There will be no come out, come out. It will be just deliverance. God has released angels of deliverance. And I want to tell you in this season, God will release angels of faith. God will release angels of breakthrough. God will release angels that will break all these transgenerational curses and witchcraft induced poverty. God will release angels. Now the key in this season of restoration is for us to know how to trigger godly angelic activity. One of them we have just learned is prayer. It will trigger this destiny help us to swing into action and to come on a rescue mission for your bloodline, for your family. Tell your neighbor it is in this season of restoration. You must learn how to trigger angelic activity over your destiny. So then it says, as we stop, it says, verse 8, 
Then the angel said to him, Guard yourself and tie your sandals. So he did, and he said to him, Put on your garments and follow me. So he went out and followed him. Now look at what happened in verse 10. That is what struck me. It says, When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened on its own accord and went out down on the street and immediately the angel departed. Then are you seeing there are doors that will open automatically because of angelic activity. Iron gates are going to be broken. Demonic barriers, demonic blockades, demonic caveats, satanic injunctions will be lifted by the angels of Elohim. In this season, we must learn the key how to trigger angelic activity in our embassy. Let's rise up as I read verse 15. It says, but they said to her, you are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is Peter's angel. The earlier church had this understanding that everybody had their angel. Have you noticed there are some brethren, when they come around, there is just worship in the atmosphere because they walk with worship angels. There are some of us, when we walk around, deliverance just happens because we are called into deliverance ministry and we have been assigned deliverance angels. There there are some of us here who walk with angels of financial breakthrough. So when they come, automatic doors just open, chains break. Begin to talk to the Lord as I welcome Mama Pastor to come and take over. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We honor you for the word that we have received this morning that you are restoring us to our destined places in you, O oh God. Lord, we want to declare today, Jehovah Father, we are coming to the place you intended us to be a place of authority, silencing the powers of darkness. Lord, we want to thank you. Wherever we may have grieved the ministering angels over our lives, we pray restore, restore, restore. restore. We are praying this morning, Jehovah God, yes. the chains that were binding us, oh God, yes. Lord, release your angels to break the fetters of our lives. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, chains of poverty, yes. chains in marriage of frustration, yes. we pray be broken. broken in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Father, we are praying, oh God, release your angels, oh God, and give us boldness to function in the areas you have called us to function in, oh God. Yes. Lord, we are praying, restore. Restore. Restore the joy of our salvation. Restore. restore. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, them that you have called in the mountain of finances, yes, restore them back into that place. Yes, Lord, we are praying this morning, oh God, them that you have called in the even in the mountain of deliverance, yes, Lord, restore, 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 yes. Lord, wherever we have gone, even into sleep, oh God, yes. awaken us, oh my Father, to that place. 
and all the glory, the honor shall return to you. Thank you for your servant that has ministered to us, O oh God. And we pray that your people shall be lifted up, O oh God, yes. above everything that the enemy had intended yes. to bring them down with, O oh God. So preserve us and protect us, O oh God, Jesus. to the glory and Amen. honor of your holy name. Lord, we are praying, release your destiny, connect us, O oh God. Yes. That we shall be connected to the right places, O oh my it Father. Is. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Open our eyes, O oh my Father, yes. that we may see our destiny. Help us, O oh God. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open our eyes, that we shall also be the right destiny. Help us in somebody's life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we honor you and bless you. Thank you even for the offering that we are going to give this morning. We pray the Lord, it shall minister to our mother this morning, O oh God. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, we pray that you shall restore the prophetic voice in every marketplace, oh God. Wherever we are serving, my Father, restore the prophetic voice, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the glory, the honor shall return to you. Father, we give you praise and we give you honor. Wherever the enemy had suppressed us with embarrassment and shame and reproach, today we decree favor. We decree favor, favor. upon your people, my Father. Yes. We decree favor. We honor you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.